are gynecological cancers? These are cancers of female reproductive organs. The most common one is cervical cancer and as we know it is it is the second most common cancer in Indian women. Next is ovarian cancer. This is the third most common cancer in Indian women. Uh, and many a times uh, these are uh, detected early because of regular checkups. Uh, but if you don't have regular checkup and sometimes they become advanced stage so then in that in those cases uh, generally there is ascites ascites is uh, like uh, accumulation of fluid in the abdomen uh, for which uh, there is abdominal distension and these are generally little advanced cancers of ovary and uh, many a times these are very silent so regarding ovary it is now an upcoming and very important cancer because majority of the cancer patients are diagnosed with cervical cancer or uterine cervix but the number of ovarian cancer is increasing so the main treatment one of the main treatment is uh, in certain ovarian cancer is cytorative surgery hi everyone this is dr saptarshi ghosh uh, i am a clinical consultant oncologist frcr uh, in Hope and Hill Cancer Hospital and Research Center, Jyotiya Kali Mohd Fulbari. Hello, I am Dr. Sudhir Bhandar, Head and Senior Consultant Surgical Oncology, Hope and Hill Cancer Hospital, Jyotiya Kali Fulbari. My name is Dr. Saheli Saha and I am a Radiation Oncologist. I am Dr. Palak, um, I am also a Radiation Oncologist. Namaste, I am Dr. Visa Mukherjee, Consultant Surgical Oncology, Hope and Hill Cancer Hospital. So today on the occasion of uh, Gynecological Cancer Awareness, uh, we would like to talk uh, about the, uh, some of the most common cancers that happen in our country, but most people are not aware of it. So what are gynecological cancers? These are cancers of female reproductive organs. So there are five main types of cancers that we are talking about when we talk about gynecological cancers. The most common one is cervical cancer and as we know it is it is the second most common cancer in Indian women. Next is ovarian cancer. This is the third most common cancer in Indian women and we also have other cancers like the cancers of, cancers of womb or endometrial cancer, uh, vulval cancer or and vaginal cancer. So these are the five common types or the five types of gynecological cancers. Now Dr. Pollock will highlight the symptoms that we need to look out for. As uh, Dr. Saheli has told about the most common type that is the cervical cancer. If we talk about the symptoms, the symptoms will be like it, it is generally seen in the patients of the reproductive age. The, uh, the females which get uh, periods. So the uh, symptoms will be like the uh, heavier than the usual periods. Uh, uh, the, there will be in between periods there will be bleeding or there can be a uh, bleeding after the sexual intercourse and the other types like in the ovarian cancer there will be a fullness of the ab abdomen uh, patient will feel like heaviness in the abdomen and there will be urge to pass urine again and again blotting kind of symptoms heaviness will be felt uh, there could be edema of the lower limbs also then in the CA endometrium, that is the womb or the uterus cancer, in, in those patients, uh, it is generally in, seen in the older age group, that is up, after the menstrual cycle and the periods have stopped. So if the suddenly periods start again after it has stopped for one year, let's say two years and again it has started bleeding, so th this is a sign of like the uterine cancer. Then uh, it could be a whitish uh, foul smelling discharge or blood stain discharge from the vagina. So these are the common symptoms which, which has to be looked for while talking about a gynecological malignancy. So whenever we talk about cancer or any disease, we get the question whether there is any treatment. But before treatment comes prevention. So as, as we all know and as, as we all say, prevention is better than cure. So cervical cancer, the, the second most common uh, cancer in Indian women, it is a preventable disease and more than 95% of the cancers, uh, it is associated with a virus or HPV. Now there are good vaccines, uh, even, even one has come up from the Serum Institute of India, which can help prevent this kind of cancer. So, uh, so we need to be proactive and if you have any questions, you need to talk to, about, talk to your gynecologist about the kind of vaccines that might be needed. We also need to keep in mind that uh, 
the vaccination it is not for every age group generally it is uh, for the age group of 9 to 14 a single dose is needed but more than that uh, the the vaccine can be given but it needs to be discussed with the doctor beforehand generally in age groups more than 60 26 the efficacy is not well known so that was uh, that was about cervical cancer prevention the next step is early detection of cervical cancer so we all know about pap smear uh, testing in the western countries that has been going on for a long while and it helps early detection and as we all know that early detection means better chances of cure so today uh, i'll be discussing a little about uh, ovarian cancer Uh, so ovarian cancers are uh, generally very silent growing cancers uh, they don't do not uh, produce much symptoms uh, the most common symptom of ovarian cancer is abdominal distension and uh, some abdominal heaviness uh, so like the main ways of detecting ovarian cancers early is uh, to go through uh, regular checkups uh, full body checkups where uh, they do ultrasound of whole abdomen Uh, to check if there is any ovarian cyst or ovarian tumor uh, and many a times uh, these are uh, detected early because of regular checkups uh, but if you don't have regular checkup and sometimes they become advanced stage so then in that in those cases uh, generally there is ascites ascites is uh, like uh, accumulation of fluid in the abdomen uh, for which uh, there is abdominal distension and these are generally little advanced cancers of ovary and uh, many a times these are very silent silent growing cancers so uh, what's the main treatment of ovarian cancer the most important uh, pillar of treatment of ovarian cancer is surgery uh, so we have uh, surgical oncologists in hope and hill cancer hospital dr shudip haldar and dr vishal mukherjee they will be probably discussing about the surgical part of ovarian cancers so surgery is the most important pillar sometimes in uh, very early stage cancers we do not do the biopsy and go ahead straight with the uh, su- surgical uh, debulking followed by the requirement of chemotherapy which is decided on the histopathological features so the main thing is that surgery is the most important treatment in early stage surgery is done first followed by chemotherapy which may or may not be required according to the pathological features but in advanced cases there are we give generally three cycles of chemotherapy which is called a new adjuvant chemotherapy which which is given just to decrease the bulk of the disease so that the surgery is easier and uh, followed by the surgery again three more cycles of chemotherapy uh, which are given uh, to decrease the risk of recurrence so the ovarian cancers uh, have a genetic predisposition so there are some genes like BRCA mutations and all the which are, which predispose to ovarian cancers so it's very important uh, nowadays to uh, do these genetic tests uh, germline braca and uh, brca is called also called as braca here so uh, germline braca testing and somatic braca testing is required to uh, see whether uh, the patient is harboring any braca mutation or not if she is uh, having a braca mutation positive then we generally give some oral tablets called uh, parp inhibitors uh, there are very m- m- many types of parp inhibitors nowadays like olaparib rucaparib and uh, Uh, so uh, these are nirapadib so these are the various types of parp inhibitors which are available in the market and recently many indian co- uh, pharma companies have come up with a very cheaper option of uh, parp inhibitor called olaparib so that's a good news for uh, the patients with ovarian cancer with brca mutation so uh, post uh, chemotherapy we generally give this parp inhibitors if the brca mutation is positive and along with that uh, we also give uh, some maintenance bevacizumab injections in advanced cases like in advanced stage 3 or stage 4a cases where uh, we have uh, optimally debulked the cancer and uh, we are uh, expecting a longer uh, survival in these patients in those cases bevacizumab is given uh, bevacizumab is a targeted therapy and anti vegf therapy Uh, so vascular endothelial growth factor uh, it inhibits the active vascular endothelial growth factor so that uh, targeted therapy is also given every 3 weekly for uh, for a year it's almost 17 doses to decrease the risk of recurrence so these are the uh, most important parts of treatment of ovarian cancer uh, the part with the bevacizumab and the parp inhibitors are the newer treatments which uh, should guide uh, which should be the means discussed with every patient who is affordable and who can uh, bear the cost of therapy because it does improve uh, survival and also improves the pfs septumor is a gynecological 
Cancer Awareness Month. So we would like to highlight regarding the role of surgery in different gynecological malignancies like ovary, cervical cancer, and also the endometrium and with others the role of the palliative surgery in different settings. So regarding ovary, it is now an upcoming and very important cancer because majority of the cancer patients are diagnosed with cervical cancer or uterine cervix, but the number of ovarian cancer is increasing. So the main treatment, one of the main treatment is uh, in certain ovarian cancer is cytorative surgery. That means it will enter the removal of total abdominal hysterectomy, both the ovaries uh, with uh, different glands and also some momentum and wherever the possibilities of the spreading of this cancer and any suspicious tissue will have to take it out and it is a large and a very major surgery it may sometimes uh, happen that it is um, adhered to the um, colon uh, so we have to remove the part of the colon sometimes it may need appendix appendix removal so it is a very big surgery and apart after the surgery is completed there will be some facilities in some centers to do the high pain so it is a heated chemotherapy inside the abdomen but the important thing is we have to ensure that the whole tumor has been removed microscopically uh, another important thing is the patient's diagnosed as or is prepared to the early stage we never did any FNC or biopsy in that cases in ovarian cancer so we did upfront surgery but in some of the cases like in patient present with ascites or performance status is poor in that cases we have administered the new enrichment chemotherapy that is chemotherapy before surgery three cycles then assess and then again the surgery and after the surgery again the patient we need three more cycles of chemotherapy so first I will talk uh, about the cervical malignancy which is one of the most common cancers in our Indian females and one of the things which I really want to highlight is that the cervix cancer, the treatment of mainly depends on chemotherapy and radiotherapy. The role of surgery in cervix cancer is only limited when the disease is in the very very early stage. Otherwise, the main treatment of cervical cancer is chemo radiation. There is no role of surgery, but unfortunately, we sometimes find our patients coming to us with a report of a THP so already done a hysterectomy with removal of the ovaries and found to have detected carcinoma cervix. So it's very important to understand the role of surgery in cervix cancer is just limited to the early stage only. Next moving on to the endometrial cancer that is the cancer of the uterus itself. So the common presenting symptom is that of postmenopausal bleeding that is after menopause Leading a present with uh, bleeding from the vagina, and one of the most important uh, DD comes is the endometrial cancer. The important, uh, the important thing is to understand that we need to do the surgery just not to remove the uterus and the ovary, but surgery is also a part of the staging purpose. As we do different types of investigations before our cancer surgery, in case of endometrial, surgical staging is the most important part where we have to remove the pelvic clamps of the right and the left side. Sometimes we have to remove the paraptic lymph node if there are lymph nodes found to be suspicious. And we also need to remove the omentum, that is the part of the fat which is inside the omentum. Then based on this, we actually need to stage the disease, whether the disease is in the early stage or in the advanced stage. So even with carcinoma of the endometrium, just doing a mere hysterectomy will not help us in any way. We need to do a complete lymphadenectomy and staging for endometrial carcinoma. And regarding the, some of the patients in advanced stages may present with intestinal obstruction, that is the patient cannot pass the stool or the fetus. So in that cases, sometimes we have to do the ileostomy, that is the stoma, that is moving, a, creating a, a intestine outside of the abdomen and the patient will pass stool from that uh, area. So that is a very important uh, palliative surgery so that the patient can have the food and also it can pass the stool. So it is very important surgery and also the patient sometimes present with ascites, that is the intractable ascites, to so have to administer some pigtail or some form of palliation so that the fluid can take out from the uh, abdomen. So the patient got relief from this sort of problem. So this also palliative surgery that is very important in a case of uh, maybe in 
post operative patients maybe in advanced stages of operative cancer or cervical cancer also so these are the different role of surgery and even now uh, there is some early stages and some patients may uh, we can offer some laparoscopic treatment also regarding the endometrial cancer also so it is very upcoming with the minimal invasive surgery with the reduced pain and also the early ambulation and hospital stay is very less so that is very important so these are the important uh, information and important uh, awareness generating uh, information regarding gynecological malignancies and the role of surgery in gynecological malignancies thank you